Pop some luck. Hello. Haribo. This is the Ursa Mini 4.6K uh, from HiraCamera.com. And I thought it was a perfect subject for one of my new vlogs. I don't do the actual video reviews anymore, um, but this is probably going to be the closest thing you're ever going to get to those old style reviews. Hello, my name is Philip Bloom, and welcome to the. Intense I can't believe these stuff right, right now. The, right now on the learning curve for this camera. And as soon as I can get one and sell my EX1, I will. They just won't be as well shot, they won't sound as good, um, but the content should be pretty good still. batteries, battery charger, uh, a CFast 2 reader, there we go, fantastic. It's EF mount, so I have a shitload of, of Canon glass, so I'm all sorted there. I think my only issue is, well, I've got two issues. Actually, if we're talking about issues, I've got a lot more than two issues. But in regards to this uh, vlog review, uh, I would say the media is my biggest issue. And secondly, my back is still uh, buggered, and uh, so I've got to be careful uh, with what I do. Um, and this is not an A7S, this is with a battery and lens and probably a, a 702 small HD, although the monitor is, is okay here, but I have no hood. Maybe I'll just fashion one out myself with some black wrap. Um, it's, not, it's not a great walk around camera for me, um, but it's not going to stop me. I'm going to make sure I get some good footage with it and not fuck my back up. So it's Saturday and I'm going to go and do some filming with the uh, the Ursa Mini 4.6K. I wasn't going to go a bit further uh, away, but um, the weather's just crap everywhere in the southeast. Um, well, in England, full stop. It's not raining right now, so I probably will just go into Richmond. I'll bring my uh, weatherproof uh, for the camera and stuff and just get a variety of shots in different settings and just see how it goes. It's not what I wanted to do. I really wanted to go somewhere with it, but the weather's just not going to play ball with me. Um, just need to figure out what I'm going to need. I think. I'm going to um, bring with me the small HD 702. Um, I'm actually using it right now. Um, it's here. Uh, I'm using it now on the uh, A7S, uh, so A7R Mark II, um, just so I can see what I am doing. Um, just because the screen isn't that great. And uh, I would normally, well, I would often use sort of like the graphical eye. I don't have a graphical eye, the graphical HD from Zacuto. Um, but because of my back and stuff, I don't really want to be bending over and to look into to get a shot. So if I'm doing low shots, etc. So what I really want to do is um, just have a monitor that I can angle. Whilst this one is okay, when the sun comes out, it's, it's not great. Um, cards, so I have um, the one that came with the camera from HireCamera.com, which is the uh, SanDisk Extreme Pro uh, Compact Flash, sorry, CFast 2, 515 uh, megabit second speed. And I have um, a Transcend 128 gigabyte one. Hold on. Uh, battery as well. Um, and I've also got two more of those. Um, I picked these up um, from Amazon. 200 pounds each um, I, I couldn't I could of course return them so uh, I just needed some cards um, that's it, so, but I might keep them you never know see fast um, too is becoming more common but what am I gonna get um, 
data wise using these cards. So let's put let's put one in and battery. And what I'm going to do is get another camera so I can film the screen and show you what it is I'm getting. Because this is the Sony AX53, which I'm just going to use to um, film the screen and other stuff. If this was the Ursa Mini, the normal one, I wouldn't be able to pick it up because it's really heavy. I have a, a V-Lock now on it, and you can see it's uh, it's it's a nice design. I mean, it's in that it's you know it's got like a hand grip on it, and uh, um, it's got proper buttons and stuff. Um, there's a few things which I'm going to point out I'm not so sure about. Um, having the um, XLRs on the top, I don't know, I'm not, I'm a side guy. I like the, my XLRs to be on the side, to be on the top. It means cables coming out, uh, pointing up. You need to get some right angle XLRs for it. Um, the, it's interesting, the, there's a, the cable for the hand grip, um, what's, it is, uh, there's, it's actually, you can separate it and extend it, but it's, I don't know, it just seems like a really weird place to put the actual connector just here. Um, you can rotate it by loosening this, and you can rotate it like this, but what you can't do is you can't pivot it. Uh, you can't do that on the um, FS7 either, but you can on the FS5 and it's a, a much nicer thing because when you are using it on, with a hand grip, not that I will be doing any handheld work uh, with it for now, uh, certainly not on this test, um, your arm can get tired if it's not in the right place. So you just might want to just angle it slightly this way instead of it being straight and it puts less strain on you. So that's just, you know, it's a minor thing. So the power button um, is behind the LCD screen. There is no other way, on, there's no, no buttons on the outside turning on and off. So if you want to um, turn the camera on or off, it's the button inside. With regards to audio, you do have some pots here, but they're not the hard stop pots, they're just turning, so, and there's no markers, so really, not great, it would be nice if they were actually physical, you know, like pots you get for other, you know, every other camera I've had with audio pots, but uh, we don't sadly. Two CFast 2 slots here, they aren't covered over, so they are exposed when you have the um, screen open. The buttons that we do have on here, we have menu, um, program, peaking, focus, iris, so your iris is controlled very much like other ones, other Blackmagic ones, by your uh, left and right arrows for the Canon electronic aperture ones. A record button. Uh, on the outside uh, we have the iris, focus, record and forward and back play and F1 and F2 programmable buttons. So the one that's missing um, is peaking but we could put it on one of the programming, programmable ones. Uh, PGM one is missing. Uh, audio pots is missing and um, the power button is missing. Oh, and of course, very importantly, the menu button is missing. A couple of buttons on here as well on the grip and a record, but there is no menu button. A D-tap um, for power out onto the side, which is uh, part of the V-mount grip here. We have um, SDI out, SDI in, and reference in time code in and we have uh, a 12 volt in as well, and your headphone jack is uh, down the bottom there as well. It's nice that we have um, an SDI out for an EVF, and we also have um, 12 volt out at the front as well, which would be good for um, if you need to power anything from the front, which could be um, an EVF, for example. At the front, we have a microphone here. We have the, uh, obviously, the uh, lens cap, which is hiding the sensor. There we go. EVF mount. There is no built-in ND filters at all for this, so um, just be aware of that. You will need external ND filters. The nice, simple black magic menus, and I do like the black magic menus because they are very, very simple. Um, the main one that we'll be using uh, will be settings. Under camera ID, we can obviously put the camera ID, put the date, uh, the time, which, uh, yeah, that's pretty correct. 
uh, ISO. Our ISO goes up to 1600. That's as high as it goes, as low as 200. Uh, our white balance we can change in steps and we have shutter angle um, that we, we can change uh, the usual sort of amounts. So these are our options. I have Bert coming to explore the box. Bert loves boxes, don't you Bert? Bert, what do you think? Any thoughts? He's basically saying he doesn't know because he's not shot with it yet. Don't do any scratching or anything or leave any poo inside the box, all right? Because I'm gonna have to clean it up. And don't knock the one I try over. Bert, come here. Bert. Come on. We have the ability to record He's going to sit there. Uh, ProRes Proxy. I think that's our lowest format. In ProRes, we can record UHD 4K. Uh, we can't go any higher than that. So we have Proxy, LT, 422, uh, HQ, 444, 444QX. That sounds very big. And then it has different variations of RAW, different compression. So you have four to one ratio, three to one ratio, and uncompressed. Now, the difference between RAW and um, ProRes in resolution is we, are, we have an ability to have a, a larger field of view um, because it's using more of the sensor. It's 4,608 by 2592. That's why it's called 4.6K. So you only get 4.6K if you shoot in RAW. Well, you don't get it if you shoot in ProRes. But I'm confused. Why does it say 613? You're showing your bum to the people. That can't be right. Let's check that this card is 128 gigabyte card, 6 minutes 13. That's not right for ProRes Proxy HD. So I don't know what I've done wrong. I'm just going to reformat it uh, just in case I've done something really stupid. Have I done something stupid, Bert? He does love it when I have gear out because he likes to get it around and around things. But I'm going to start in, um, if I can see the camera, but this is raw, uh, just as 20 is, uh, this is raw in its, <laughs> sorry but it would be nice to go and shoot a proper thing, as in some, you know, like a, a mini doc or something, but for now it's just gonna be some B-roll in Richmond. I apologize for the unadventurousness of it, but at least it gives me a chance to just have a look and see what I feel about it, and uh, we'll go from there. Lens-wise, I'll bring wide angle, I'll bring telephoto, 7200, Canon, um, a couple of fast lenses, I, uh, I think, but uh, mostly just, probably just gonna bring three zoom. I think three zooms and one fast lens is absolutely fine. Uh, I just need the ability to, um, put ND on, variable ND. Um, oh, sorry, I'm gonna try something new. Using this, which is the new Solar Eclipse variable ND filter. And go here. Uh, it looks nice. It's, uh, we'll see what it's like though. Um, when I get the Sony to decide which way to focus on. There we go. Um, Solar Eclipse variable ND filter from Genus Tech. See how that goes and uh, I think one of my lenses is 82, so I'll have to take a different uh, filter for that, but it'd be nice to try this out. So. Cool. Might have better get a move on, really. Um, I'll see you over there. So, the camera is on the front seat. Um, I put a wooden camera handle on it. Uh, so, carry on, there's no strap. Um, see how it goes um, how far I can go I'm just gonna I am just gonna go into Richmond uh, I'm not gonna go far um, the weather's still clear Richmond's very close to me it's 
Uh, the town centre is 15, 20 minute walk, really. Um, it's only a few minutes in the car. Uh, in the past, I, I would generally walk down into Richmond and get some shots along the lock and stuff, but there's no way. It's too heavy on the stuff that I've got. With the back as it is, it uh, doesn't make any sense. I'm going to go and park in the centre and film in a radius. Go to the bridge, get uh, onto the bridge, look across, do some filming on the green. Um, hopefully there'll be some people out because the weather's not too bad. It is the summer, technically, uh, even if it isn't super hot. So. We'll see how it goes, but uh, I'm looking forward to getting a few shots. Okay, let's just get the camera all set up. In the middle edge tripod. Let's put some more HD 702 on. Turn her on, check it's all working. So camera set up. I'm shooting in uh, RAW for the moment and um, you can see the um, histogram. So I just want to hold the highlights, it's just there, I've got a very bright sky. So I could blow it, but I just want to just hold it. So I'm shooting RAW in uh, 4 to 1. It's going to give me 16 minutes on this new card. Let's see how she goes, just wait for this train. That was good. Uh, I was waiting for one train and I got two trains, so two's better than one. So it's uh, two minutes down on my card, 15 less, but I, I got four, so I'm alright. I'm already finding it annoying that I have to open out the LCD screen um, when I have my own monitor on here. Uh, I feel the same I've had an EVF on here, uh, just so I can access the menu. I have to open up the screen and I know it sort of makes it. You have to keep closing it, I don't know, it's just a bit of a, I don't know, it's just a real shame there's, there's no menu button that is, why do I have to keep opening the screen? Um, I'm just going to move, just, uh, I'm struggling a bit at the back, it's, no, we'll stay over here. Um, I can see the uh, small HD 702 screen fine, um, but the the one on the actual camera, eh, not so good. But that's why I brought the 702 with me. Just looking for shots. It's not that bad. I definitely it's. Definitely was worse on the previous one. Oh, sorry, on the uh, cinema camera. It's, uh, I can see it. I mean, they've got the brightness set to max. I can check that. I do. I put the Canon 11 to 16 on to do a really nice big wide angle shot um, in the 4.6K, which is slightly bigger than Super 35. So it's not as big as full frame, but it's a, it's a nice shot.
time to move on a little bit. As I feared, if I, I want to play back stuff, I have to be in the same settings as in frame rate. So I, I may play back 120 frames per second clips, or I want to play back um, some uh, 4K. I'm going to 4K. And playback. Playback. All right, I'm playing back. So this will play back my anything that was 4K. Whether it's slow mo or it just has as long as it's the same frames per second, I think. Uh, so it won't play back the raw. I have to go into raw mode to see raw. Trying to hold the exposure on the right hand side of the frame, 4.6k raw, 4 to 1. Okay, this is um, 4k in 422, ProRes 422. Uh, and this is um, the, the full sensor. This is HD in uh, ProRes 422. HD in ProRes 422. And this is RAW 4 to 1 and this is the uh, DCI 4K. So it windows slightly, crops the sensor slightly as to be expected. And this is 2K, uh, obviously it's going to crop it even more, cropping in sensor. So it it's, is it's cropping the sensor, it isn't uh, down sampling it at all in camera, in RAW mode. And this is HD ProRes 422 using the windowed sensor. Windowed sensor, so it crops in the native for the HD. I just wanted to show off the floaty lens technology of the Sony AX53. Uh, it has, and it just uh, get off me on something more interesting. So it has a 20 uh, times zoom lens, but it also has a 10 times clear image zoom. If you don't know what clear image zoom is, look it up. And Les about that man's got one on my uh, PB Extras page on uh, Vimeo as well. So, so let's just zoom in. This has been a reverse drill test of my back um, since I injured it six and a half weeks ago. And uh, just coming out here with the tripod, a proper size tripod, a proper camera, and uh, the wheelie bag, and um, I'm in agony. Um, I've got to stop, it's um, clearly not. Um, anywhere close to being better. So well, I've got some nice stuff that I'm happy with what I got, I think. I still have a completely empty one and a half cards left, which oh well. I've got to stop. That was disappointing, um, not the camera. The camera I think it's done well I haven't looked at the images yet, but I think it's Got some good stuff, but um, I thought I'd be able to you know, do more filming. But my back is not in a good way. Um, it ran really. I've been all right recently, um, but I have never. I haven't really put any strain on it. I haven't really tried to do anything until today, and so now it's really throbbing. My back is throbbing. I've got sciatica. Basically, it's not good, um, so I'm going to have to just rest up for the rest of the day. Um, well, I don't want to rest too much, is it? Wait, do, do some stretches. I don't know. That's it for today, filming out and about. I see, you know, for this, this pain dulls down, and maybe I'll do some low light tests because I can only really do it and today. Or, or tomorrow night because I've got to get the camera back so I don't have much time um, but I'll do my best so I'm not super happy obviously this is what I do if I can't do what I do
I'm filming this stuff to camera uh, on the Sony a7R 2 with the Zeiss Batiste 25mm f2. Um, you know, it would have been nice to film it on this, but then I can't refer to the camera because I've only got the one here. So, uh, but it's cool as well though, because it's got autofocus and it's got very good autofocus actually. Um, as you can see, cheers. And so it's, it's nice to be able to show stuff to camera and the camera will focus on it for me in a nice way. I think I've got it set to um, medium speed for autofocus and uh, sensitivity to high. So not too bad. Um, looking at the footage from yesterday, uh, it's Sunday night, it's 25 past eight. We're gonna have like a, an hour of daylight left. And then I wanna do a few um, low light tests in the kitchen. It'd be nice to have gone outside and done some filming, but uh, after yesterday, uh, I'm not going out and doing any more filming at the moment. My back just can't take it. So uh, it's, I'm just having a look at the footage and it's great. It looks really, really nice. Uh, this clip here was uh, one of the raw settings, one of the raw shots, the master wide, and I exposed for the highlights and the trees were very much in, in the shadow and I lifted it and it looks great. I mean, this is at 200 ISO um, and it's, it's, it's very nice and very clean. Um, all the shots look, you know, there's nothing I'm really unhappy with. I, I just think it, it, it looks good. I mean, there's definitely some, some rolling shutter um, as to be expected. And I think that's one of the disappointments a lot of people have with the camera. Because uh, when it was initially announced at NAB last year, uh, 2015, it was announced as having um, global shutter. It doesn't, it has rolling shutter for the CMOS sensor. And it certainly, it can be visible with some fast movement. Not like, sort of like, like the A7 series Jello, but uh, it's, it's there if you're gonna move it. But uh, nothing to get your knickers in a twist over. Uh, the image is great. Uh, the 120 frames HD looks great. The 4K, uh, UHD ProRes looks great. The, the RAW uh, 4.6K looks great. I mean, it all looks really nice. And this is with, obviously with decent light. But, um, but I mean, there's some, some of the things that, which are uh, actually one feature which is so simple and it's amazing really that nobody else that I know of, please correct me if I'm wrong, certainly no cameras that I have used record audio when shooting um, in overcrank in super slow motion mode. This does. So when you play back the clip on your timeline or just in the browser, you'll hear audio. This is on the ProRes. You'll hear audio, um, which won't sync with the images it's seeing because it plays at a real speed, normal speed, whilst the clip is playing back at slow motion. But the audio is there, which is a terrific feature. It really is. And of course, the audio is also there when you record in RAW. Um, as a separate WAV file within the folder. That is a great feature to have, it really is. I, and it's one of the things that really frustrates me a little bit uh, when shooting with my FS7, because I do like to shoot a lot of stuff for slow motion, but I don't want to shoot it with audio, which means having to shoot at 4K 60p and then conform it in post, because it then, first off, it has to be conformed in post and has to be remembered to be done by the edit, uh, the edit uh, suite, which is on Wonderlist. Um, but also it does drop the quality when you conform it. Whereas if you shoot at uh, 4K, 24P or 25P and over crank to 60 frames per second, then you don't um, lose that bit rate, but it's mute. And then if you want to get some natural sound, you then have to do the shot again, just at normal speed to capture it. Or most likely just going to fake it in post. This is, a gr this is great. This is so simple and I just wish other cameras had this. The quirks, the operating quirks. The image is the best thing about the camera. The camera itself, this is the most normal camera looking camera that Blackmagic have ever made. Uh, I haven't shot with it handheld, but it's, it's great, it, you know, it's great. It just has, as always, some really irritating quirks. I mean, not compared to, to when we first uh, used Blackmagic. This is my first Blackmagic camera. Where is it? Here it is. This is the uh, cinema camera. So I don't even remember how long ago I got this. Um, but I mean, what a device, you know, it's, um, it's like a prototype TomTom. -tom. Uh, the screen is like a mirror. Uh, it didn't have things like deleting clips and format and time remaining. 
uh, all sorts of things really. Um, these are all being solved with the, the uh, Submini. We all have this and, and actually with the firmware on these cameras. My previous favorite camera until uh, this one came along was the uh, pocket camera, the, the little pocket camera from uh, Blackmagic and this has got a, a Metabones on it and a cage from um, Wooden Camera. Uh, I like this because it was tiny and it was a great one to sort of get um, shots, high quality shots in, in different in corners of rooms or in places you could normally. The downside was the battery life is li literally atrocious. It's, it's, it makes the battery life of the A7S seem like the most enduring long life battery in the world. Uh, the screen's bad, it has this weird texture on it when you put the viewfinder on you can see really clearly. And it was only uh, Super 16, but it's still a pretty good camera. And it was, for me, the nicest one. The smallest one you could shoot RAW with, if you want to shoot RAW. It had the uh, lossless uh, RAW, had the ProRes formats. I didn't really use it though, apart from after my three part review, that was it. I've never used the full size Ursa. Way, way, way too heavy, uh, crazy design. Um, they just went completely off the rails, I think, with that design. And they pulled it back um, with the Ursa Mini 4.6K. And it, and it certainly feels a lot like a proper camera. So let's just talk about those quirks. Whilst I'm not somebody who likes to dwell too long on the negatives, um, the camera has a lot of positives, way, way, way more positives than the negatives, where say like on the pocket camera, it was like, uh, it was about half and half at the time, which is much more improved now that it has that new firmware. But the negatives here, I would still say some strange design choices, the screen, not being able to turn it around, hiding the power button behind the screen so you have to access it like that, not having a window on there, covered at the slots, not having a menu button accessible uh, apart from behind here when you need to change the settings quite a lot. Um, the playback function, you can only play back the clips if you are in the same setting as you are that you recorded those clips in. So if you go, you go into playback and you, you go through the clips and you're like, I'm sure I shot more than that. You did. It's just, you, it's only playing back the clips that you shot. Say if you, if you shot 60p uh, 4K ProRes, it will only show you anything that was shot in 4K ProRes. It won't show you anything shot in HD or anything you shot in RAW. So that is quite annoying. If I've shot different speed, if I've shot uh, 120 frames per second or 60 frames per second or, 20, or just straight 25 or 20p, 24p, whatever it is you're doing, doesn't it, then it's fine. It, as long as your base frame rate is the same as in 25p and any slow motion after that, as well as a normal speed, you can play, you can go back and look at the clips. But anything that is um, a different resolution or if you've shot a, a different base frame rate, uh, as in 24p or 30p, whatever, or, or even if you've done a 50p or 60p, you can't. If it's overcrank on a 25p base frame rate, it can play it back. But you have to then guess what's on the card because it doesn't tell you. It doesn't tell you what's missing. I think one of the most irritating things, and these are just down to basic operational use, is I know on the display that I'm in 25p, but that's it. I mean, I don't know what resolution I'm in. I would like to know what resolution I'm in. I would like to know if I'm shooting in ProRes or RAW. I can go into the menu and go to settings and go to camera and check there, but I can't see it from the screen. And I don't understand why I can't. There must be something wrong. Let me just go through the settings because this doesn't make any sense. LED brightness, frame guides. There's just no, there doesn't seem to be an option for me to display the resolution. That makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. So there's two programmable buttons on here on the front. Um, and I don't know what they do. And I don't know how to change them. So I don't know if I'm being really stupid here. Let's go to camera. No. I don't know, again, I could be wrong here, but I don't seem to have any way of programming those buttons on there, which is slightly annoying. These aren't uh, deal-breaking issues because 
The image is great and really lovely. Uh, the camera is with a rig, is, can turn into a really pr practical, usable camera. And, and then we're not talking like a, you know, a crazy rig like you would have had to, to make up to make this work. Um, we're talking more about um, you know, just like a shoulder pad, uh, a viewfinder, and it'll work pretty well. Probably a grip extender as well. So all in all, this is easily, easily Blackmagic's finest camera, by far, by far. Um, so, I mean, is it, you know, value for money, it's, it's crazy good. It would be nice if they could fix the issues that bother me, because they're operational. Operational are, it is a pain. You need the camera to just work really simply. The menus are really simple, but the fact that I have to, I don't know what resolution I'm in. I don't know if I'm in RAW or ProRes. Uh, I can't play back clips unless I'm in that mode. I, I have no thumbnails to look through the clips. Um, that is a pain. It, the, you know, as, the, as, as issues go, it's not major. Uh, would it be nice to keep the whole sensor uh, if you drop, if you want to do super slow motion? It can't, so it has to crop it. And you know, it's not the only camera that does that. That's what the reds do as well, so it's nothing new. I guess I'm just a bit used to my Sony's and where it, you know, it lets me choose. I can crop or I can have the full sensor. So, uh, but it's so cheap. It's so cheap for what it is. Would you choose this over something like an FS5 or an FS7? I don't know, I still feel that this is a different market. I think if, you know, if you had, if you were lighting stuff, which you should do for most things, but uh, as, opposed to, as opposed to just having to work with what's there, as in documentary filming, a lot of documentary filming, I, I, I still don't think this is the right camera. I think you're better off with a camera that's got better sensitivity. This only does 1600 ISO. Uh, you can push it a little bit in post, but really not much. So that's something, you know, without getting into noise. So that is one of the, the things you've got to be careful of. But if you're going to work um, with light and you, you know you're always going to light stuff and it's going to be much more controlled, um, yeah. It's, it's cracking, it's, it's a terrific camera. The 4.6K film log is really nice. You can just have to put an S-curve on there, maybe put a little bit more saturation if you want, but that's it, and it's away you go. And yet it does hold the highlights and it holds the shadows. As long as you're watching um, your exposure, you're watching your histogram, you can get some really lovely results. The other thing which, you know, is glaringly lacking is the ND filter. Now, you're, you'll always have people who will be um, an, an apologist and say it's a film camera and you film cameras don't have built-in ND filters. Reds and Alexas don't have built-in ND filters. Well, many film cameras have built-in ND filters and uh, as in movie making things like film film. Um, it would be a great thing to have a built-in ND filter. I was using a variable ND and that was fine, but you look at something like the, the variable ND built onto the sensor of the FS5 and it's genius. I'm sure I've missed out some stuff, um, some things it does that I haven't worked out how it does it or, uh, or some of the negatives maybe I've just not figured it out. I've not had a very long time with the camera. I'm being an apologist here and making excuses, but it's true. So, but I am just waiting for that song to go down and then I can do my last little bit of filming, which will be the low light filming. Just see uh, what I can get. I'm not expecting much, but 1600 ISO with a fast lens, obviously I can get a fairly, pretty damn good shot. Um, but the key thing with these high ISO cameras, especially with you know, my friend, the best ISO, low ISO, sorry, high ISO camera, which is the A7S slash A7S II, um, is you're able to shoot in low light situations without having to be wide open. So you can shoot at you know, f5.6 or f8 in crazy, in, you know, I've had my ISO at 10,000 and got some great results from it. So, you know, I'm not expecting it to come anywhere near that. Um, so, yeah, well, the thing is, no put me talking about it. I may as well just do it. So I'm just gonna wait for that sun to go down, finish my drink. And have a look at some more of these lovely shots. If you are going to shoot at uh, 
1600 ISO. You need, obviously need to make sure you have fast glass. I do have fast glass. I have a Sigma Art 24mm 1.4 on there. But look, I'm lit with two candles. What do you expect? There are cameras out there which would love this amount of light uh, and would thrive on it, but this is not one of them. But this, you know, I'm not expecting it to be. This camera is one which works terrifically in normal lighting conditions. And that should be enough for many people. That, you know, if you want a camera that shoots in lower light, there's much, loads of options out there, loads of options out there, of course. So, well, there you go. I wish I had had the camera a bit longer. I'd love to actually shot a project with it, but um, that's the nature of uh, not owning a camera and, and doing a, a little review like I've done here, a vlog review, not like a proper review like I've done in the past, because um, I really do feel those need to be done over longer periods of time. And it's, it's done in a quite a linear way. Um, as vlogs tend to be. So that's pretty much the end there. I'm going to leave you with something which is, uh, I don't know, just to uh, go back to the last thing that I shot and put out. Uh, well, when I first got the Blackmagic 4K production camera a while back, and that was some stuff of my dad. Uh, I didn't do an actual review. Uh, my dad's not brilliant health-wise at the moment. Um, so just to uh, think of dad, um, and I hope he's gonna get well soon, um, I'm just gonna do some things that I'd have got him to do on camera for you, isn't it? I'm not going to smoke anymore because I'm inside my house and that's disgusting.